this little program information thing came about because uh, we, we've made some major changes to the officiating program and um, there's been we've had two two of these similar of these webinars uh, they were more for the focused on the uh, provinces and territories and um, kind of introducing the program getting some questions and uh, feedback we we actually took some time and and made some changes as uh, as some of the PTs had recommended and uh, then we rolled out the program and we thought uh, another one of these little information sessions would be a good thing so everybody has an idea of what's going on. Um, my name is uh, Dave Howard and I'm chair of the officiating committee and uh, we also have uh, uh, John Roach uh, who's also a member of the committee on this call so uh, if I try and lead you astray maybe John will bring you back. And so this is this is the agenda. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of the program, the program overview, and we'll finish off with some questions. I think uh, likely the whole uh, shebang. My target would be to have this less than an hour long, and um, we'll see if we can keep to that. If you have any if you have any questions. Um, I'm not I'm not very good at keeping an eye on the uh, on the chat stuff so just uh, unmute yourself and and jump in and uh, and we'll try and we'll try and get any questions answered during or after the uh, presentation so um, 2012 the uh, PTs requested changes be made to update the officiating program, make it easier to get referees into the program. It needed to be compatible with the long-term athlete development model and the long-term official development models. These are sort of a high high level high level models that uh, were created by uh, Sport Canada. The um, program should be more competency-based as it as to align with the WSF program. And September 2013, we released a framework for the new program. And uh, the old levels were um, A, B, C, D, A being the highest level, D being the lowest level. And then we had, uh, the, those are referee levels. And then we also had a one, two, three, four, which was the marking level. The new program has uh, has no marking level per se. Uh, we 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 have club, local, provincial, and national levels. And um, the the online course basically brings you in at the bottom as a club level or club level referee. The um, marking has uh, been built into each of the levels as a competency for that level. So uh, if you're a provincial level referee, we expect you to be marking at a prov provincial level of marker and we have some criteria for that. Same thing for local and national. Um, club level, you don't need to know any marking because uh, all you need to do is pass the exam, the online exam or uh, go through a clinic. So November 2013, uh, sticky mouse. November 2013, an expert panel was formed at the request of the board directors. Uh, the members were myself, Graham Waters, Joe Ellis, Barry Faggy, and Wayne Smith. And we were tasked with implementing these uh, initial 2012 requirements. And now we're going to talk about the. Uh, I'm going to give you an overview of the program.
Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, try it up here. Okay, the new program, uh, the course and exam, which were initially implemented a few years ago, uh, were updated to conform with the new uh, 2014 rule updates. We modified the existing assessment sheets and processes to place more emphasis on competencies, and we'll be talking a lot more, or a little bit, or a lot more about competencies in a minute. We've created a uh, squashcanadaofficials.com website to allow referees and assessors easy access to individual status and uh, areas for development and improvement. We fully documented this program through creation of uh, referee progression documents and an administration manual, and we're going to have a talk talk little bit about them and uh, we've created an assessor training course. Um, the assessor training, uh, the, the, old, the old program um, anybody could assess but we felt that um, we, we, sh we should at least give somebody uh, a little bit of formal training before they start assessing uh, individuals in the program. So uh, existing provincial and national examiners are required to take this course and pass the associated exam in order to continue assessing in the, in the new program. We created a number of training modules including the topics of assessor training course, turning and its variations, crossing the flight, the danger zone, injury and illness, position of advantage, ethics, improving explanations, access interference, swing interference, and we'll be adding others and if necessary modding, modifying the ones that are there. Uh, we've developed a matrix which has been, uh, we've developed a matrix to map referees from the old system to the new system and um, as a general statement we've been uh, we've been generous in the in the mapping from the old to the new. We're not uh, we're not trying to demote people as they move from the old system to the new system. Uh, we give them the benefit of the doubts, so we we would uh, credit them with a number of competencies based on uh, what assessments they've had under the old system. So uh, there's four levels of officials. Uh, old B, the club level, uh, local, the old C level, provincial, the old B level, and national, the old A level. The um, the assessment form was actually the basically the first thing we developed when we uh, we started looking at how we were going to. Um, how we're going to modify the program. So this form is the everything that came after, everything developed out of this form essentially. So we've got the candidate, their status, the assessor, the assessor's status, uh, who's playing and where they're playing. And uh, anybody that's being assessed uh, for each call that's made, the referee's decision here, um, the uh, assessor's decision whether they agree or disagree, uh, who asked for the let, either player A or player B, was it a tough call, and the code, which I'm going to talk about in a second, that's the competency code. So this is the big thing that was added to the um, added to the the whole program is this competency code, the score, and then any comments that go along with it. So the um, in terms of the codes, um, okay. So interference decisions, yes, let, no, let, stroke, uh, conduct decisions. So these are the decisions over here. And 
and um, the competency codes shown over on the right hand two columns uh, rule knows the rules uh, CON consistent decisions front wall interference direct access uh, effort to play the ball swing interference minimal interference created interference winning return uh, match control composure communication uh, how they did how you did on uh, if you're in a three ref uh, a three ref system how did you uh, work independently of the three refs um, RM which is uh, effectively working with other officials and market performance so each one of these competency codes uh, are directly mapped to the WSF competency codes, so they're the same. Uh, I think we, we've got a fair bit of experience now, and I suspect that uh, we may drop some of the codes as, um, uh, for example, minimal interference, um, effort to play the ball, and minimal interference uh, could be thought of as as a, as a similar item, but we'll see how uh, how how things go as we as we work with the system. And then once once the assessment is done, um, the assessor goes through and uh, makes specific comments on each of the competencies that were demonstrated during the match, and um, for each of the the uh, competency either they uh, didn't get enough information to know whether you are competent in the area so an NA or NTS not to standard which means that you didn't perform to the standard uh, that that's expected of you or a pass and that's applicable for each competency and then um, overall rating the match, how you did, um, and some overall comments, and whether you're recommended for local, provincial, or national. Now, uh, one good thing about this is um, you could not demonstrate, you, your, your match may not have proven that you're, uh, you're competent to actually move up to the next level. In the old system, we call it a signature. Um, so um, you may not ha have proven uh, had a tough enough match to uh, move to show that you're uh, capable of moving from provincial to national, but you still may have demonstrated a number of competencies. Um, so so we would we would give a not valid for the overall assessment, but you'd still get credit for. Uh, whatever competencies you demonstrated you were competent in. Okay, so uh, now we're going to look at the uh, referee progression matrix, which is something like this. And here are the things that um, are going to uh, allow you to move from one level to the other. Um, so from club level, uh, you take the basic online course, you get 80% on an exam, uh, you don't need any match signatures, no verbal knowledge, no experience, and you don't need to prove any competencies. So that's this this line here, the club line. If you look at local, um, you uh, you need two consecutive signatures, and um, they need to be by uh, different provincial or national assessors. And you need 25 games experience. This experience column, we're um, you, you track your own experience. We do it on the honor system for now. And um, so we're looking at local. The uh, 
interference, we want two consecutive successful on front wall direct access, play the ball and swing. And for marking, we just want you to use the correct terminology. So this stuff is laid out for, for all of the levels um, from club to national. And um, I'll just make a comment on this consecutiveness. So um, two consecutive successful would mean that um, you get a pass or a or an NA, which means not wasn't demonstrated. So um, uh, any uh, not to standard in the middle would kind of reset the clock. So you'd need two consecutive again. So you could have a um, one pass on front wall, and then uh, the next match you did, you didn't demonstrate the front wall competency, but you didn't fail it either. And then the third match, you demonstrated it again. So that would be two consecutive on front wall. Um, under the old system, uh, for the match signatures, you could do a, theoretically, you could pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail, pass, fail. And now you've got your four or five signatures, and you move to the next level. So we're... Uh, uh, I think most would agree that that didn't demonstrate that you were competent to the move to the next level. So, uh, I'm sorry, can we ask a question? Yep. Go ahead. Okay, I'll go. It's Tim with Squash Alberta. I just wanted to confirm something as you're going through that. You've got yeah. kind of groupings of um, the competencies there, uh, and it looks like it's yeah. a, a smaller list at the kind of local level, and then it kind of goes to the full list for the provincial and national level. Correct. Um, Correct. With the two consecutive, are you tracking those all separately then? So, like, if I did, if I got a front wall and then missed it, but got uh, b access to the ball, like, those are, you're tracking those all separately, so once I have They're two totally three, independent, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So one match you could demonstrate front wall, the next match you could demonstrate uh, swing, the next match you could demonstrate created interference, and um, those would all count independently. Okay. So so they're all, they're all tracked independently. I'll kind of show you, uh, um, we we are going to have some tools for um, uh, for the PTs and for myself to uh, to show what uh, what the competencies are. Right now, I can I can do it, but it's a manual process. I have to write silly queries to the database. So obviously, we're going to fix that. But uh, but you can still go through them and and an individual's assessment and and do those calculations. Yeah, so yeah, good question and, and yeah, they are totally independent. Yeah. Dave, this is John Cushing. Um, yeah. So um, if you've got a couple games, the first game, front wall, you get a few decisions on front wall and you're, you're uh, um, you know, you're given an assessment on that. The next game, there are no indication of no indication of front wall interference. So you would put the assessor would put in an A. Exactly. So, so that doesn't count you against you. The only thing that counts you against you is, that resets your clock is a not to standard. Yeah, but the third game, okay. Yep. He gets um, he or she gets uh, a pass on front wall so he's in in as essence it takes three games or three matches to get two successful um, competencies on the front wall and interference and that's the way I don't I don't think you go front wall and a and and that's two successful ones you still have to have another pass yeah, exactly yep a successful yep. pass yeah yeah okay. it, it could take it took could take five matches to get two consecutive uh, and 
I'll, I'll give an example of bleeding. You're definitely not going to see that um, every match. You might only see it, you might only get the opportunity uh, one in seven or eight games. And um, and so so either you do it right or you do it wrong. It, it, and it might be uh, how you handle it will depend on whether you pass or fail that uh, specific competency. But it, but as I say, they're all independent. Okay. Okay. Anybody else on that? All right. So I'll move to the uh, equivalency under the under the system. So this is um, this is basically a chart that allows you to move from the old system to the new system. And um, as you can see, uh, so so if you have three signatures, you automatic three signat three C signatures, you automatically move to local. If you have two, uh, you get credit, you get all your competency credits, and you only need one sig one local signature to move up. So this stuff is all. Um, is all done. Uh, it's input manually by a senior assessor when they present their book, and they're moving from one system to the other. And you can see that uh, in all cases, um, <coughs> basically we're giving um, we're giving full credit for the competencies um, that are required to move to the next level. You, you may only need to get uh, one signature. Uh, now the trick with this is is even though you get all these credits, if you get a not to standard, you'll have to go back to the original requirement of getting uh, two can say two consecutive on that particular competency. So so we we assume you're good and, until you prove us uh, prove to us that you're you're not so good in the competency. Um, in terms of being mapped to the new system. Uh, any any questions on that before I move on? It's uh, it, it basically we're depending on the uh, individual to um, show their book to a senior assessor and then the senior assessor will get it put into the database. Uh, Dave, it's John. Um, you mentioned about mapping or tracking the referee's competency record, I guess. Yeah. Um, who is actually doing that? Well, right, right now it's a, uh, right now I'm doing it. Um, the individuals can look at their own status and trigger a, a review at any time. So it's similar to what's being done in the current system where uh, eventually somebody brings you your their book and says uh, I think I've met all the requirements can you confirm that and the same thing happens now except that all you have to do is uh, uh, send me an email and say do I meet all the requirements and I'll I'll check it now um, this is all going to be uh, automated depending on our uh, programmers availability but uh, eventually um, when you reach your uh, when you reach your enough credit to move to the next level it'll send an email to uh, to a senior squash candidate administrator and that administrator will will do the check and promote you and hopefully send you a little note saying congratulations and uh, you're now a you're now a national referee. So in essence, we're we're bypassing or streamlining the process, and yeah. and bypassing the provincial uh, squash associations who sort of had carriage of this. Well, the, 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 uh, 
yes and no. It, it could be the individual or it could be the province that triggers it. Uh, and, and the province can um, the province can provoke, pr promote them too from up to the up to the uh, um, up to the provincial level. Oh, so okay. um, I the the I guess the the answer to your question is either one of us could do it. Um, that's something that we haven't really talked to the the PTs about uh, as to whether they want to get into that. Uh, uh, into the nitty-gritty of, of actually entering the upgrades, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll that that that's something that we'll add to our list, Brittany. Yeah, but that would be a good <clears throat> that would be a good discussion, and um, yeah, because yeah. there's sometimes some confusion, you know, in getting <clears throat> those things done. So yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's it's all going to be automatic eventually, but but for now, um, um, like to to actually move from someone from one level to another is as simple. I, I can show you in a, in a few minutes how simple it is uh, for someone with the right rights. Okay, so uh, next we'll just talk a little bit about assessor progression. Um, we've, uh, we've created a, an assessor progression document and uh, the provincial assessor is similar to the um, provincial examiner. The, uh, the only the only big difference between the old program and the new program is that uh, the provincial assessor must take the assessor training course and um, the rest of the the rest of the stuff in here is similar the provincial examiners were uh, were allowed to uh, assess without any training but um, sorry, provincial examiners weren't allowed to assess without any, they, they were allowed to assess without any formal training. They obviously had mentoring and, and they moved up. Um, referee, standard referees under the old system could assess without being assessors and we've uh, got, got away from this in the new system. I just wanted to comment that um, to move from the old system to the new system, all that the provincial examiners or national examiners need to do is take the course and pass the exam. Any, uh, any questions on uh, assessor stuff? Is, is there yeah, hi David, it's Tim. With us. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, John, is yeah, there a ahead, timeline? Jim. Okay, sorry, John. Is there a timeline to to do this for PE um, to to do this? Uh, I I think the timeline we set up was what you have to do it within a year. Yeah, that's uh, the initial piece. We haven't set a definitive time now. Um, are you speaking, John, specifically about um, people who were current, who had the under the old system had a status of a PE? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. So um, we did not define that, but we will have to make a recommendation and define that it, it was a year. Um, but in the notices that we've sent out, we haven't yet defined that, so we will have to uh, evaluate and set a timeline, but there will be one um, because with the current program, essentially, uh, Dave, you can correct me here, but with the current program now that it is fully adopted and assessments having to be done by a assessor who completed the assessor training course and exam, then therefore they should be getting it as soon as possible because their assessments would not be valid 
if they're not being done, if they haven't completed the requirements to be an assessor. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the bottom line is to assess under the new pro under the new program, which is uh, in effect now. Uh, you need to take the course before you can before your assessments are valid. Okay. Okay, so I guess my question is, sorry, this is Tim Squash, Alberta, yep. um, because we've got, um, you know, we're kind of continuing to operate under the old system, at least in the short term. Um, what, do those assessments just not go into you guys, and we just kind of are kind of overseeing that? Well, it, uh, um, I would suggest that that if anybody that's going to do assessments should take the course, um, it would make things so much easier because technically uh, the, any assessments done without taking the course aren't valid in the new system. Um, Tim, can I maybe suggest that um, for the sake of this being an information um, session on the new program as a whole, that um, Alberta's position of uh, adopting partially uh, or not fully or an adapted version, that we take that, that conversation needs to happen um, offline uh, a little bit just so we can dig a little bit deeper into what exactly it is that is um, stopping Alberta from fully adopting the, the whole program. Okay, yeah, sure. I certainly didn't mean to derail the conversation. No, no, you, de you definitely didn't. I just meant, like, I think we could spend a, bit, a lot of time talking about it, and I think we should, I think it's worthy of a conversation between the offices, for sure. Okay, sure. Okay. Okay, so um, now we're into the, into the nitty-gritty of the whole thing, and I'm just going to run you through a little bit of the, uh, the new program. And if you have any... Any questions? Just feel to jump in here, but I'm going to I'm going to run through uh, fairly quickly a little bit of the uh, the Squash Canada database. So you'll notice up here it's uh, develop d d e v dot squash canada official dot com. So this is our development site, um, which we use to test any new stuff that's coming into the site before we promote it to the live site. And um, because there's something neat in here that's, that's coming in, I thought I'd, uh, I'd just log into the, the uh, development site first to give you a preview. Now, we, uh, you notice that uh, if you look in the, the notes section, you can see basically uh, the development that we've been doing and there's uh, I'm just going to click on the more here and these are all the these are all the functionality that's been added since uh, the initial rollout which was August in 2015 and quite a bit of work's gone into this uh, uh, our uh, squash buddy Andreas or is the is the driver between development on this, and he's been he's been doing it on his own time. So uh, I hope everybody appreciates the the amount of work that's gone into this, and the amount of work that uh, Andreas has done to get it to where it is now. And hopefully he'll continue to make it bigger and better. So I'm going to uh, go back to the home page again. You can see um, we've got a register. If uh, anybody that's new to the system can click on register, I'll do that, and you put in your name, your province, your email address, create a password, and click on register. Once you click on register, then um, an email will be sent to the email account that you define here. And um, so Dave.squash will get an email, and that's a security feature for uh, proving that you are who you say you are. Once you get uh, registered in the system, 
and you've confirmed the, the email that gets sent to you once you're registered, then you can log into the system. And so I'm going to log in now. I'm going to log in as somebody else. Okay, so I'm logged in as DK Dave right now. And if I go to the assessments tab, you'll notice that I've, this is a list of all the assessments that have been done in this database since day one. So if we go to page six, um, there's quite an old one from 2004. So what I've what I've done is when I um, map people from the old system to the new system, I actually enter some old assessments and give them the credits that they're that they're due uh, based on the the books that they hand me or the assessment sheets they hand me. Now you'll notice that. Um, there's uh, in the results column. There's stars and QCP national and um, stars more stars. So the only thing that that DK Dave can see right now is the results of his own assessments. And I can actually go in. Uh, let's do a search here for DK Dave and. There's a couple of DK Daves here, but different email addresses. So uh, there are three here that I can view right now. And the results, this assessment was a, a not accessible. This one was a WSF signature. And then this one was a, a QCP national signature. So I can, I can actually see um, based on, on a little bit of sorting how I did, how I've done in terms of uh, results of the assessment. I can reorganize these. If I click on candidate, all of the DK Daves will be together. If I click on province, uh, well, if I click on province, all the Ontarios are grouped together, all the BCs are linked together. If I click on assessor, all the assessments done by a specific person are linked together, or I can click on the event and they're all together, and so on. Or I can just go by date, which is the default. So let's go back to my, well, I've got a DK Dave here. Uh, let's go back to our sorted DKs. So I can actually look at this assessment. So this assessment was done by Damian Green. He's a WSF assessor. It was done uh, just recently. And um, the players were Christian Olson and Lance Beddoes. And the match decisions can be entered, but if you attach the assessment sheet, there's, it's not really necessary. If I look at the summary of competencies, um, as I pass my mouse over them, I can see that all the ones on the right column here are not applicable, and not to standard is in the middle, and pass is on the left side. So during this particular match, uh, I passed knowing the rules. I demonstrated front wall, direct access, play the ball, uh, swing, minimal interference. Uh, winning return, uh, match management, stress, uh, communication with the players. I didn't demonstrate the three referee system because it was a single referee. Uh, there were no side markers. I did it on my own and I passed on marker performance. So these are the competencies in that particular match that I passed. If I look at the assessment summary, um, so you can put comments in here. The assessor puts comments in how the how difficult the match was, how well the um, candidate performed, and either recommended for some level in this case WSF 
or not valid or not to, not to standard. You'll notice that when I'm uh, when I'm when I'm editing these, um, I can only view them. I can't actually change anything, so I can't go into my to this assessment of me and change this to a pass. Now, uh, if I go to the real website and I log in with somebody who has a little bit more authority, such as myself, when I go to the assessment page, I can view any assessment and if I go into, I'll search here for, So here's my DK Dave assessment. And I can actually now edit this. So I can go in here and uh, here's an example of uh, having put some decisions in, but normally it would normally you'd have the assessment file attached. So I can view the assessment file here. just by clicking on it and this is the, this is the actual assessment sheet from from that match so Damian Green and signed it and uh, made comments and all that kind of stuff all that kind of good stuff uh, <clears throat> Dave this is John um, I yep. can't see what you're doing but or I can imagine but uh, so when you get the assessment sheet, do you, uh, as an administrator, then tick off all the competencies yes. in a matrix kind of thing, and that's what yeah. you're and that's what you're showing the people now. Okay. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I would tick off the. I, I could change this one to an NA because I, well, if I was in edit mode, I could change it to an NA. Why would you do that? Uh, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> but I'm just saying that you can. I could change it to a pass or whatever. If if somebody made a mistake, uh, the the actual assessment file is here, so I could look and if somebody made oh, right. a mistake, I could go back and update sure. a competency. And right. and so in fact, a uh, um, a candidate can go and look at their own and say this doesn't look right. Uh, could you check this for me, please? And uh, and we could do that. Okay. I'm going to go back to the development site now because there's something cool in here that everybody will want to see. Um, so this is the assessment stuff. We've got an about tab. Um, yeah, not much there. And contacts. So here's the. Uh, contact information if anybody has any questions or uh, problems with the database and this resources tab is the real cool one so um, this has all of our uh, all of the stuff that I showed you today the referee progression matrix um, the equivalency under the program and you can actually click on any of these and it will come up with the document that I just showed you so um, um, the other thing is these training modules. Uh, if you note in the descriptions, they can take a long time to download. So depending on the size of them, they may take it up to an hour to download or one to three hours. Now what uh, Andreas is working on now see this little um, video camera on the right hand side um, we can actually um, go to YouTube now and all of these uh, all of this training stuff is is set up to view in YouTube so I can click on this and it brings up a it brings up the assessor training course I don't know can everybody see that Hopefully you can. 
And um, yes. Yeah. Okay, so if I click on play now, now I don't have to download anything. I can I can go anywhere in the assessor training course, and uh, so I could pause here and um, continue on later. So that's a real cool thing uh, that that'll be out very shortly. Uh, and then you can also look at it full screen. And uh, we have some administrative stuff here. So I can go, go in and look at, uh, oop, I'm on, I haven't got any rights on that site. So let's go to the main site. So I can look at uh, everybody that's, uh, everybody that's in the database. These are all the um, all the referees that are currently in the database, and I can go in and let's so let's search for Howard. So this is me. I'm from Ontario. I'm a regional referee, national assessor, and I'm a senior assessor and super user. So I can do all kinds of neat stuff with the database. Okay, so um, that actually covers most of the, pretty much all the stuff I wanted to cover. Um, the the current program, uh, current status of the program, it's been rolled out by the Squash Canada and the PTs. Uh, our final review was completed by the PTs in November. We took on some comments and feedback and implemented changes. We completed that in December. We sent out a summary review uh, in January of any changes and status of everything. And um, we sent out uh, a brief on the updated program in February, just a couple weeks ago. So we're, we're gonna continue to be responsive to any issues that are developing during the rollout and uh, make recommend necessary revisions that we have to and um, any major amendments will be uh, communicated by Squash Canada to the PT. So uh, now I'd like to open up for questions and if you have any questions afterwards, uh, these are the people to uh, send your email to. Anybody uh, got any comments or questions? Yeah, can you hear me, Dave? Yeah, I can. Okay, I was walking earlier and the mic wasn't working. Uh, so back to the provincial assessor. So it sounded yeah. like you're doing away with the PE completely and moving totally to a PA, right? Is that correct? Correct. And the so same with like, national. Okay, and just like how we have A, B, C, Ds and a, and a progression, is there a, a progression that you follow to get your PA? Or is it as simple as taking the exam and I'm assuming there's um, a process? To move, if, you, if you're an existing PA, it's as, as simple as taking the exam. If you're not uh, an existing PA, then um, are you online so you can see what I'm going to show you? Yes. Okay. So if you're not a PA, uh, you get nominated by your PT which for you won't be an issue. You must be a provincial or national referee. You complete the course. You um, uh, have a chat with a national assessor to go over the full certification clinic. Um, the reason for that is under the old system, um, under the original system, you had to do a certification clinic. And there's no such thing as very few uh, PTs are giving certification clinics now, so they give rules clinics, and rules clinic is only a uh, is only a subset of a full full certification clinic. So, um, so we want to make sure that you know everything. So we're going to sit down with you and make sure you know everything, 
and then after after you've sat down with the national assessor, then you share one rules clinic with the assessor, and uh, they will assess you on that rules clinic, and then you uh, then you become a provincial assessor. Okay, I assume there is a process to it. So yeah, yeah, um, the process is laid out right here. Dave, and on you. We, yeah. And, and, yep. No, no, sorry, you finish. Yeah, no, that, um, that's, I, I was just going to say the national is, uh, um, the national basically didn't change from what it was before. Um, to move from provincial to national, you already will have taken the, um, the rules clinic, or sorry, the, the uh, assessor training course if you went through the regular progression. So all you need to do is be a, a provincial assessor for three years and get nominated and get an assessment. Same as before. Uh, Dave, John here. Okay. Uh, under the old, old system, um, it, it, are there any restrictions if you're going to be a PA and yet you're, you're a provincial referee? You, you can only upgrade to your 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 level. level. Correct. Okay. Yep. All right. And um, the other question I have is on page four, there's the level of the match and this and that. Um, can you do, if a, a club official does a game and, <clears throat> oh yeah, that's what I was going to, what constitutes a national uh, level match, for example, but he does a good, he or she does a good job and, uh, enough to to be a national referee. So can you jump and, and give them a recommendation to a national referee versus provincial? Um, there, there, if you look in the um, administration manual and here in resources, um, where is it? It is it's here somewhere. Oh yeah, right here. So this this one here, it it does have um, some provisions for jumping people. Uh, typically, the only uh, time that you'd be uh, jumping people to a national level would be if they're coming from somewhere else or uh, or they're pros and they've got tons of experience but but there are ways that you can do it and they're laid out in this in, in the admin manual but in trying to assess that difficulty or or to what level that referee should be at do we still have to uh, be cognizant of, of who the players are and if they're they're ranked oh, absolutely in the, in the top yeah. 20 or whatever okay um, is that it has down? to be the level of play of that uh, of the top 20 it doesn't necessarily have to be top 20 uh, right or the equivalent it's up to the assessor to, to to assess the level of play Any other uh, any other questions? That was it for me, Dave. Thank you. <laughs>